Chapter 30. They all raise their heads, listening. Shh, there it is again. But the voice was too far away from them to hear what it was saying. It's the cloud man, Miss Spider cried. I just know it's the cloud man. They're after us again. It came from above. The earthworms, it came from above, the earthworms said automatically. Everybody looked upward, everyone except the centipede, who couldn't move. Ouch, they said. Help, mercy. They're going to catch us this time. For what they, for what they, now saw swirling and twisting directly over their heads. It was an immense black cloud, a terrible, dangerous, thundery looking thing that began rumbling and roar even as they, as they were staring at it. And then from high on top of the cloud, the faraway voice came down to them once again. This time it was loud and clear. On with the faucets, they shouted. On with the faucets. On with the faucets. Three seconds later, the hole underneath of the cloud seemed to split and burst open like a paper bag. And then out came the water. They saw it coming. It was quite easy to see because it, was, it wasn't just drop, raindrops. It wasn't raindrops at all. It was a great solid mass of water that might have even, might have been a lake or a whole ocean dropping out out of the sky on top of them and down 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 crashing on crashing first onto the seagulls and then onto the peach itself while the poor travelers shrieked with fear and groped around frantically for something to catch hold of the peach stem the silk strings, anything they could find. And all, all the time, water came pouring and roaring down upon them, bouncing and smashing and slashing and slashing and swashing sw and swirling and surging and whirling and gurgling and gushing and rushing and rushing. <laughs> and it was like being pinned down underneath the biggest waterfall in the world and not being able to get out. They couldn't speak. They couldn't see. They couldn't breathe. And James Henry Trotter holding on madly to one of the silk strings above the peach stem told himself that it must, sure, this must surely must be the end of everything at last. But then just as suddenly as it started, the deluge stopped they were out they were out of it it was all over the wonderful seagulls had flown right through it and had come out safely on the other side once again the giant peach was sailing peacefully through the mysterious moonlight sky moonlit sky i am drowned grass gasped the old green grasshoppers spitting out water by the pint it's, it's gone right through my skin, the earth, said the earthworm, groaned the earthworm. I always thought my skin was waterproof, but it isn't. Now I'm full of rain. Look at me, shouted the centipede excitedly. It, it's washed me clean. The paint is all gone. I can move again. That's the worst news I've had in a long time, the earthworm said. The centipede was dancing around. The deck was turning somersaults. The centipede was dancing around the deck and turning somersaults in the air and singing at the top of his voice. Oh, hooray for the storm and the rain. I can move. I don't feel any pain. And now I'm a pest. I'm the biggest and the and best, the most marvelous pest once again. Oh, shut up. Up, the old green grasshopper said, "Look at me!" said the sea, cried the centipede. "Look at me! I'm freed! I'm I am freed! Not a scratch, nor a bruise, or a bleed. To his grave, the fine. To his grave, this fine gent. They all thought they had they had sent, 
and now very and I was on I very near went oh I very near near went but they can't but they sent quite quite the wrong centipede 